Coming up on Mayo Clinic Q&A. Most people who get COVID-19 recover fully within a few weeks, but some continue to experience symptoms after that initial recovery. These people are described as long haulers or having long COVID, and among the issues are problems with the heart and lungs. This is a virus that affects the lining of the blood vessels. When they're infected, they become dysfunctional and blood clots inside the blood vessels can form, and that affects the heart as well as the lungs. Not only can you have the common heart attack or blood clots in the veins or the lungs, but also less common diseases like myocarditis or pericarditis occur at a higher rate in patients who've had COVID-19, both the younger as well as the older patients Welcome everyone to Mayo Clinic Q&A. I'm your host, Dr. Helena Gazelka. A recent study found that people with COVID-19 are increased risk of heart disease even a year after their infection. The study looked at the health records of more than 150,000 US veterans. It found that people with prior COVID infections were 60% more likely to develop cardiac issues. Joining us to discuss COVID-related cardiac disease is Dr. Leslie Cooper. Dr. Cooper is the Chair of Cardiology at Mayo Clinic in Florida. Welcome back, Leslie. Great to be with you today. Well, this is a fascinating study because we're starting to hear so much more about long COVID and the complications of COVID long-term. What did you think of this study? Well, I mean, thank you so much for asking. This was a really timely study. As you point out, we have seen reports for about a year that six months or longer after acute COVID, people have symptoms like chest pain or shortness of breath. And people, we've been trying to figure out what is causing this. Could it be damage to the lungs? Could it be damage to the heart? Or maybe the syndrome of deconditioning that comes after a significant hospitalization. But this study, which was done in 153,000 veterans, all of whom had COVID-19 and were followed for about a year to look for cardiac symptoms, really set the standard for the best quality data that gives us the highest level of detail and in the, in the largest population. And you are, are you seeing this in your clinic as well? Indeed I am. This is just what I'm seeing in clinic. Many patients who are both the healthy younger athletes, as well as the older patients who had pre-existing cardiac disease will come into the clinic with shortness of breath or chest pain more than three months after COVID-19. And at that point, we start a search to figure out what could be causing their symptoms. Uh, Leslie, what kind of cardiac disease comes from COVID or happens after COVID? Well, it turns out, I mean, there's a large spectrum of disease. Not only can you have the common heart attack or blood clots in the, in the veins or the lungs, but also less common diseases like myocarditis or pericarditis occur at a higher rate in patients who've had COVID-19, both the younger as well as the older patients, compared to patients who are contemporary uh, comparators or historical comparators. I had mentioned a bit earlier the long COVID or long hauler syndrome, as it's been called. Are these cardiac complications part of that, or are they a different um, sort of issue? Great question. And so usually they are. So when you think about long COVID, there's brain fog. There's mm -hmm. all kinds of neurologic symptoms that, that occur more than three or six months after the initial illness. In addition, there can be other effects in, in the kidneys or other organs. But for the heart and lungs together, shortness of breath or chest pain is not uncommon, occurring in 20 to 50% of people six months after a hospitalization for COVID. I think one of the questions that naturally comes to people's mind is, does it matter how severe your case of COVID was, whether you developed cardiac complications? In other words, if someone is more ill and they're hospitalized, are they more likely to have long-term um, cardiac a disease than someone who had a very mild case? Again, a great question. And it turns out the answer is yes. This study by the VA uh, investigators included out of their 153,000 veterans, 131,000 who were not hospitalized. They were not that sick. In addition, there were smaller groups who were hospitalized and about 5,000 who were in the intensive care unit. It turns out that in all of those groups, there was still a significant risk 
excess risk for most cardiac complications, but the risks were highest in those people who were hospitalized or in the ICU for COVID-19. And are there any other demographics that seem to make a difference, like male versus female, uh, different mm -hmm. medical comorbidities, et cetera? Good question. So it turns out these authors had such a large population, they could do detailed subgroup analysis. And the subgroup analysis looked at women versus men, as well as obese versus non-obese, and all different age groups. And it turns out that there was a significant increase in a broad spectrum of cardiac events in men as well as women, older as well as younger individuals, as well as people of different weights and different health status. How oh, interesting. So it really didn't make a difference? Those yeah, so, parameters? So, so each group in the subgroup analysis for most of those uh, endpoints, which were heart attack, stroke, mm -hmm. uh, myocarditis, for example, were significant in all the subgroup analyses. There were a few where the number of individuals, uh, for example, women versus men, may have been too small to show a difference because they were looking at, at about 10 different cardiac complications, and they were doing it in a subgroup of maybe 12 or 14 subgroups, which is when you get break that down, the individual buckets or, or numbers of patients within each tiny subgroup might be too small to show a difference. But generally, the pattern to remember is that most, almost all of the complications from a cardiac standpoint were significantly elevated following COVID a year after symptom diagnosis in, in women and men and all the age groups. Interesting. What is the actual impact on the heart or what actually happens to the heart yeah. uh, from COVID? Yeah, well, there, there are two broad things that happen in a severe COVID infection. One is you get uh, inflammation. So because your body is responding to the virus and the damage from the virus, uh, your immune system secretes all of these pro-inflammatory uh, proteins called cytokines and interleukins, which rev up your immune system to try and clear the virus. As part of that, that immune reaction can cause damage. That can actually kill cardiac myocytes unintentionally. And the other thing is clotting. This is a virus that affects the lining of the blood vessels, the endothelial cells. And in that, when they're infected, they become dysfunctional and blood clots inside the blood vessels can form next to those endothelial cells. And that affects the heart as well as the lungs. We know this from autopsy studies. When people do um, histology, uh, if, if, if someone dies or has a biopsy of the lung, we can see that the tiny blood vessels often have clots. Is this damage irreversible when it happens? I wouldn't say it's irreversible, but I think it may take a very long time for remodeling. So in patients, for example, who have a decrease in the heart pump function or cardiomyopathy, which is, is significantly increased following COVID, it may take months or even a year or two for that heart to recover. And Leslie, do you treat these patients any differently than people who would have similar cardiac uh, diseases but that yeah. were not caused by COVID or is it similar? Well, that is an area of intense research right now. We are, uh, if you have heart failure, for example, the cardiomyopathy I mentioned, we would give you guideline directed treatment, which affects mm -hmm. people who either have other causes, more common causes like heart attacks, for example, we would treat the same way as people with COVID-19 cardiomyopathy. However, we think that because there are specific mechanisms that in the future, we will be treating more specifically for perhaps anti-inflammatory therapies if inflammation is an ongoing cause of these symptoms. Multiple research studies are ongoing in this area. Interesting, thank you so much. Any last words to share with our listeners today, Leslie? I would say uh, it's still very important to uh, protect yourself from COVID as the new variants come out. Uh, follow uh, public health guidelines regarding either social distancing, masking, uh, frequent washing of the hands, for example. Uh, keep up to date, but those guidelines are changing and you wanna stay current. I have one last question about this study, Leslie. Were the individuals in the study who developed COVID and then heart disease vaccinated or not vaccinated or both? And did it make a difference? 
Uh, the answer is both, and they controlled for that, and they did not make a difference. Interesting. It's just the development of COVID itself, then. Yes, in, in general, although there are, is a very small population of individuals who receive vaccination, mainly men between the ages of 12 and 39, who can have cardiac side effects, the rate of those side effects is actually much lower than the rate of cardiac complications if you got the virus itself. So the vaccine is safer than the virus, even in young males. Oh, good to know. Thank you very much for being here today, Leslie. This is really interesting. It's so good to be with you. Thank you so much. Our thanks to Dr. Leslie Cooper, Chair of Cardiology at Mayo Clinic in Florida, for coming here today to discuss long COVID and its effects on the heart with us. I hope that you learned something. I know that I did. We wish each of you a wonderful day. Mayo Clinic Q&A is a production of the Mayo Clinic News Network and is available wherever you get and subscribe to your favorite podcasts. To see a list of all Mayo Clinic podcasts, visit newsnetwork.mayoclinic.org, then click on podcasts. Thanks for listening and be well. We hope you'll offer a review of this and other episodes when the option is available. Comments and questions can also be sent to Mayo Clinic News Network at mayo.edu.